It's a very interesting posterior polar cataract with uh, residual hyaluronic artery remnant material, uh, which includes, as you can see, some stellate opacities on the anterior hyaloid and with a posterior capsule that likely appears to be deficient. Uh, our case starts off uh, routinely with a soft shell technique using dispersive viscoelastic uh, along with some cohesive to ensure we have a flat anterior capsule in this young patient. The capsular axis is initiated with a sharp tipped capsular axis forceps and attention is paid of course uh, to the elastic capsule which has somewhat of a tendency to run out however is well controlled uh, with a shearing technique primarily here. It's important of course to ensure that the capsular axis is uh, adequately sized and in this case, which actually is somewhat of a megalocornea case, we have achieved here uh, about a 5 to 5.5 millimeter uh, anterior capsular rexus. And this is important, of course, if we decide to capture the intraocular lens in an optic capture position in the anterior capsule, if necessary, should the posterior capsule uh, be deficient or unusable. The key point with posterior polar uh, like opacities is to prevent uh, full hydro dissection. And so we're basically doing an anterior mechanical hydro dissection using a little bit of BSS but primarily using the mechanical edge of the hydrosection cannula, which is the chain cannula here, to do a full 360 degree uh, hydrodissection to facilitate cortical removal uh, during uh, the lens extraction. Uh, we always do a hydrolineation to separate the endo and epinucleus. It helps assist remove the central endonucleus to facilitate removal of the entire lens. Uh, these cases typically have soft lenses, and so the IA tip is uh, handy to use to remove the central endonucleus first trying to avoid removing that central opacity until after we remove the entire lens substance uh, here, and we've done this centrally. We then will remove the uh, so-called epinucleus along with the cortex, and we typically start in the periphery trying to, again, remove uh, the peripheral lens material first. Well, we're going to re-inject some dispersive viscoelastic here. We do have concerns centrally there that we perhaps have a deficient posterior capsule. Uh, certainly, the um, anterior hyaloid dots uh, likely increase the likelihood of that being the case. Uh, we continue along with the epinuclear removal, and you can see at the end here we remove the central posterior opacity. And in this case, we really have a high suspicion that the posterior capsule is deficient. You can see some of that material sitting behind that opening there, which increases our suspicion. We inject some dispersive viscoelastic to uh, pr provide some sequestration of the area, and then a cohesive on top of it to create space. And then we can reassess uh, the situation here. We come out with the IA handpiece with the chamber well formed to prevent vitreous prolapse. Further injection here reveals, in fact, that the posterior capsule is deficient. In this case, we're going to put a lens in the capsular bag first before tackling the posterior capsule. Uh, this is a one-piece lens going into the capsular bag with both haptics now uh, released and unfolded into the capsular fornix. Now, most posterior polar cataracts do not have a deficient posterior capsule. In fact, usually the posterior capsule is very thin but not deficient. Here we have somewhat of a thickened um, the posterior capsule with some lens material present as well as some anterior hyaluronic opacities as, as we'll see. Uh, this is again a variant of, uh, of a classic posterior polar opacity. We'll then perform a posterior capsular rexus. Uh, this is important because it's unlikely that a YAG laser will be sufficient enough to remove uh, the visual uh, axis opacification here. And we'll proceed to do this careful capsular rexus again aiming for about a four and a half to five millimeter uh, capsular rexus here posteriorly. This may be handy, as we'll see, to do a posterior optic buttonhole to place the eye well in a centered position and prevent vitreous prolapse anteriorly. Uh, using a micro forceps here facilitates the performance of this capsular rexus here, uh, performed in a curvilinear fashion. Now you can see we remove some of that lens opacity or capsule opacity, but there's still these little uh, dots uh, present and opacities present on the anterior hyaloid. You can see we're vacuuming uh, with a BSS uh, cannula here. Some of those opacities here trying to clear that visual access as much as possible. We had a decision to make here. Do we go with the vitrectomy and try to remove uh, that anterior hyaloid face, thereby removing the opacities, or try to just vacuum enough that we had enough of a clear view for our patient to enhance visual recovery? Of course, there are advantages in not having to go and try to do vitrectomy here. But very carefully, you can see I'm literally tugging on the anterior hyaloid without actually disrupting it and without, of course, pulling excessively for the concern of vitreous traction here. You can see we continue to, uh, to vacuum with the intermittent injections of viscoelastic. We've been able to maintain the anterior hyaloid face here and very carefully, again, uh, vacuuming some of those uh, bits on the anterior hyaloid. Very interesting opacity here, which is not a classic uh, posterior polar, polar, polar opacity. I will centered here. In this case, we're going to prolapse the optic um, poles behind the posterior capsule to place that optic in a posterior optic buttonhole position. 
Uh, this will again really nice center of the lens. Keep it well positioned here. Keep the anterior hyaloid face away from anterior vitreous prolapse. Have a well positioned eye well. You can see the axis here uh, is clear. The visual axis is quite clear. There's a few opacities present. I look at this as with minimal effect, very much as we would see perhaps with some asteroid hylosis. And certainly these will dissipate over time as the vitreous cinderesis occurs. Uh, we've done this again without having to do any kind of vitrectomy here. And we see a well-centered eye. Well, note, note the cat's eye appearance of the posterior capsule as the haptics again are in the capsular bag while the optic is sitting behind the posterior capsule. We manually remove the viscal acid to avoid vitreous prolapse with a myocol and suturing the incisions, of course, to ensure we have an adequate anterior chamber postoperatively.